Hi there, and welcome to part 5 of the 8-loop programmable pedal board switcher. Thank you. 
Well, that about covers the guitar noodling for this video and probably the next few. As you can see, the loop switcher is now fully functional. It's mounted to my pedal board. I've actually been using it for about two and a half months now and finding out any problems that I've had. Hardware wise, it's pretty much completed. I will do some tidy up work with the wiring and such sometime down the track. Uh, programming wise, it's, it's at a point where the bulk of the programming is done. All I really want to be able to do is add a few more banks of options, uh, just basically to add a few more combinations of effects and things uh, down the track as I need them. But at this stage, it's kind of where I want it to be. Uh, I can use it in the band that I play in and, you know, I don't have any issues with it. So here's the front panel. And as you can see, I've vandalized it with a permanent marker. That's because I've done some pretty big programming changes a couple of weeks ago and I had a gig the next day and I just marked it out roughly so that I knew where I was at a glance so that when I made transitions between sounds it was fairly seamless and trouble free. And that's the cool thing about this. If I don't like where that bank button is or I want two bank buttons, I can always program any buttons I like to do whatever task that I want them to do within this, this piece of equipment. Because every button just goes to an input on the Arduino board and then every set of relays and LED is connected to an output on the Arduino board. So it's very versatile in that way. And many of you would know that already because you've seen what I, I was planning previously or you've probably got some Arduino experience. So what actually happens when I start this up? Uh, on power up, there is a mute relay in this location underneath the cover, which shorts out the output and prevents any sound from coming out of it. During that time, every pair of relays on each loop gets fired. That pretty much shorts out any static charge that accumulates across the contacts and will cause initial popping sounds uh, as you select different uh, patches, basically, on the, uh, on the device. After that, it does like an indicator or lamp test and each LED fires off so you can see that they all work. And then it sits there in patch one waiting for you to hit something. Uh, even though nothing is turned on and none of the loops are actually on uh, when it's sitting there waiting, your guitar is still making it through to the output just with no effects. In, in my particular case, you might program a patch up that has no effects on it. You know, everything is an option. So let's power it up and you'll see that. You would have seen that at the beginning of that last clip. That was the relays. Now the LEDs. And it's sitting there waiting patiently. Now I can press the clean button, which is what I normally do. And I could program that up in uh, the void setup and actually have it go straight to that patch right at the get-go but I prefer just to let it uh, do its thing and and I'll leave it with no patch enabled sometime down the track I may want to do alternative things I may even program it up the way I just suggested So obviously, depending on the layout that you choose, the type of enclosure that you choose, and whatever takes your liking as far as that layout's concerned and the function of each button, you could come up with any combination or configuration that suits you. Anyway, let's open it up and I'll show you what it looks like inside.
Okay, let's have a look inside. So those who've seen the previous video will find this kind of um, familiar. The two eight-way relay boards, of course, and in the previous video I hadn't yet mounted the microcontroller, the Arduino Mega, which is now fixed in place. Also, you wouldn't find this relay familiar at all. This is the mute relay, and preferably it would be better if it's closer to the output jack. Um, in hindsight, a different shaped enclosure would have been more of an advantage to me. Something long and slender would have been a little bit more ideal. It would have spaced things out, got the microcontroller further away from my signal path and things like that. They're just things that you might be able to incorporate into your build if you decide to do one. So every pair of relays, so you've got two here, two here, two here, two here, and so on and so forth, is actually coupled up together on a single output via uh, this connection here to an output on the board just over here. I've done that so that they fire both together. I was thinking about firing them individually and maybe having one shut or, or open or whatever, um, have them close and open at staggered times, but once I got the mute relay happening, it just made more sense to have them fire together and make that actual procedure as short as possible so that I could keep the, the mute time way down to something pretty low and reasonable. And as it stands, I think it's around 18 milliseconds in the programming, which by the time the relay actually fires close and then back open, it's probably a lot less than that. I think below around 10 milliseconds, the relay doesn't actually fire off properly. It doesn't actually close, so it may take five milliseconds for it, for it to actually change state, which means that the actual off time or, or yeah, mute time is something like 8 milliseconds, possibly. Don't quote me on that. I'm just guessing. It's just like an educated guess. So yeah, relay boards, output jack, input jack, power jack. Incidentally, with the power, I changed the polarity uh, to the same polarity as all BOSS pedals and Ibanez pedals and so forth. Uh, the Arduino input jack is actually the reverse so don't get caught out with that if you are going to power it from your pedal board and most pedal board power supplies are set up to handle um, boss ibanez maxon and so forth power uh, they're set up in the opposite polarity so i believe uh, with the boss stuff the shield is positive and the inner conductor is negative so let's power it up with the lid off and you can see the relay is firing off in here so it's done that whole thing the mute relay is just let go so it was closed for the entire process uh, so now it's sitting there waiting to go. No relays are firing anywhere. It's open circuit. So I'll hit the clean. And as you can see, these two here fire. If you're lucky, you might see a little flash over here. I'll just switch. And you can just see a momentary flash uh, around this area, which is coming from our mute relay. I'll fire off another one. And you should see that little flash, hopefully. So, the relays are actually quite noisy when they fire. You can hear that clicking sound. But none of that actually makes it through to your amplifier. It's pretty much deadly silent because of this little guy. Actually being closed circuit and shorting out the output as the relays change state. Uh, there is one other little option that I've programmed in on this, and if I actually hold in these two buttons here, it goes into a tuner mode where it fires the mute relay and actually sends the signal path uh, out through to the tuner. 
So we'll hold those in and we're in tuner mode. And if I open it up, you will see that this little relay here is fired and we've got a pair of relays here firing to actually send the signal path out to the tuner. So you can tune your guitar muted and when you want to go back to playing all you have to do is hit any button on, on the board. You can hit any button and away you go. You're back to being live. So with the bank programming the way it is, I can pretty much just hit the bank button and it'll scroll through if you notice here. I've got three banks operating. Later on I'll do combinations of the LEDs. But as you can see, it just scrolls through each bank. And as you play, say you're on, you know, you're on a patch and you want to go to a patch that's on a different bank. You can actually scroll through while you're playing. And then when you get to the bank that's got the patch that you want and you're ready to go, you just hit that button and bingo, you've got that patch. So then you can go back to where you was before, hit the button and you're back to whatever patch that you wanted to select. So you can actually do that while you're playing and it won't affect the sound at all. Which I believe is with the commercial versions that have all of the um, gate type switching uh, they do a similar thing and it wasn't that hard to program up actually another thing worth noting is the hole in the enclosure for the USB jack on the Arduino board just makes it handy you don't have to open up the device to actually program it up. You can just plug straight in and program away. Well, I hope you found this video interesting and informative. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments section below. If you want to like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to subscribe, just do that. Don't forget about that notification bell thing. In the next video we'll discuss the programming, I'll go over every aspect of it in as much detail as I can and uh, have a great day.